tutorial this is Andrew Keeping um, today I'm going to be talking about a little trick that just saves so much time when you're working on a project and that's basically how to insert bars into a already existing project one of the problems we could have is one's instinct and depending on your door of choice my door of choice is uh, Cubase Pro 8 uh, sometimes what you would do is take your selection tool and you would go up here and you'd select oh hold up I can't do the whole setup why can't I come down here I need to be able to cut and edit this section down here I can if I separate it off and what you could do then is go command D but look oh that's that's doubled that up down there but not double that up right what are we gonna do well here we go what we can do is this I always separate my screen and divide my track list my reason for that is as you can see this is without the screen divided I've got my chord tracks in the middle I can adjust that around so I could put my tempo track higher up if I wanted by dragging it around uh, I could do that but it's not moving I find that I want to be able to see my arranger track throughout the entire recording, my chord track and my tempo track. So I set those up, divide the screen and that means that I could have as many different tracks as I like down the bottom here and I can scroll them up and down whilst always being able to see what I need at the top. A really very very useful uh, use of space. So let's have a look at how we can insert some bars into a project. Very useful technique indeed. What I tend to do is I go right click on the mouse and come down to the bottom here and at the bottom you have your add signature track. Now this gives us our time signature track. We can always check, I know this is, it says 4-4 four, four time, that's the current time signature. If I bring up my bar at the bottom here, you can see down here my track tempo is 100 beats at this point in time. But I, I do have a tempo track so it does fluctuate. But my time signature here is 4-4 four, four time, so we know this already. But I need to let's have a listen to the beginning of the project uh, incidentally this is a project that a client has sent me with just the bare bones of a uh, voice and guitar and he wants me to come up with an arrangement this is quite a dark sinister work entitled hallelujah by bob mortimer and what i've done is created a backing track to later go and record his vocals over the top but I can then send this recording on to him so he can practice along to it or may any any alterations if needs be one of the alterations we do need we need four more bars in the verse a minor to D minor seven I need four more of, of those before coming into the bridge passage let's just get an idea of what we've got the start works like this I say quite dark and sinister suits the work very well I think so that's our introduction setting the mood and we come in with the verse thus and this sequence of A minor 7 to D minor 7 this is what I need to repeat I just need bars of A minor to D minor 7. So how do we go about doing that? We've got our signature track here, but if you have a look here, open process bars dialog. This is a great tool. Absolutely superb time saving tool. If you come to the action over here, we can insert bars, we can delete bars, reinterpret bars, so therefore if we've got bars in a particular sequence and you reinterpret them it can give you different structure and you can actually just replace bars with other alternate bars this is our timeline at the top here so this indicates where the piece ends and here our starting point now 
If I zoom in, let's come out of this for the moment. Uh, we'll come back to you in a second because I want to be quite precise about this. This is the bridge where we change into C, E minus seven. I want this A minus seven to D minus seven. I want four more bars repeated. Now, rather than have it just at the very end, what I might do is keep this tempo here because I've got my tempo track in place. I'm going to suggest Let's get the cursor to go from there. So we've got A minus seven, D minus seven, A minus seven, D minus seven. I want to add four more tracks at that point. So we know we're going from bar 35. And as I said, I want four more bars. So I'm going to press four. There we go, four more bars. And then press process and Eureka. How easy is that? Then all we have to do to make life easy let's separate this off again so we can see everything in one place I just want to be able to get my selection tool and run it across all the bars a minus 7 D minus 7 a minus 7 D minus 7 that includes the drum track which is perfectly set up um, with the tempo and so too is the bass line there all the pads that are following my chord sequence as well that's in place so what I'm going to do now is just press command D that will repeat um, or duplicate those four bars in the selection tool and here we go boom let's go and separate off the screen once again and as you can see I'm not worried about this I can just drag this across this is the um, the vocal the original vocal track that gives me a, a demo of what we're working with and let's have a listen to that sequence. We'll just take it in the middle there. Let's move it on. That's sounding fine. And there we go into the bridge. I've just added my four bars, and that was actually quite painless. A great little tip by Steinberg and uh, it just makes life so much easier when we come to needing to fit in some extra bars. I hope that's helped. If you've enjoyed this tutorial do come and have a look at some of my other uh, tutorials online and press subscribe at the bottom of the screen. In the meantime uh, wish you luck with your projects and hope to see you soon. Bye for now.